What's going on everyone? Bryce Builds It All here, your favorite aircraft mechanic, IA and part 147 instructor, back with another video. And I got a relatively interesting comment the other day from a viewer of a video asking about tack time and there was a couple clarifying questions. So I figured I would make a video about what all of it means. What are all of these abbreviations? Tack time, time since a major, uh, TTA, TTE, uh, TA, what all these just random abbreviations, what do they all mean? If that interests you, if that's something you're curious about, make sure you stick around. So the first thing we need to understand when it comes to talking about time and time in service of aircraft is what that means. What does time mean? Is it the years that the aircraft has existed? Is it how old the airplane is? All of that. And the answer is it's how many hours of operation have been put on that aircraft. And it can be tracked using a couple of different methods. For general aviation purposes, I'm just gonna stick with general aviation for this video. I'm not gonna talk about commercial aircraft or any of that because I don't really have the experience with it. But with general aviation aircraft, many of them were only certified with a tachometer. They were not certified with a Hobbs meter. It doesn't mean that you can't put a Hobbs meter in it. It just means that it didn't come with one from the factory. For single engine general aviation aircraft, so as the engine runs, the TAC has a little time meter on it, or chronometer, if you will, and it counts the hours of operation on the engine. You can think of this as the odometer in your car. Every mile you drive your car, the engine or the odometer ticks one mile. Every hour you operate your engine, the tachometer ticks one hour, and it's divided by tenths on the decimal place. So tenths being six minutes, right? Um, but here's why that's important. When you do record entries and when you record certain things, you want to put that tack time. Now, is the time record necessary for every single entry? No. If you're changing a tire, you don't need to put the tack time for the changing of the tire. You could just put the date and you could just put the description of the work and your signature diaper certificate held and be good. But I always have been in the habit of putting the tack and the hobs if the aircraft is so equipped because it helps me understand how many hours are on that part. And I'll give you a weird example of this. If I put a vacuum pump on and about a few months later it failed and I put another vacuum pump on, I could look at the hours on that previous pump and determine if that vacuum pump lived a full and happy life before beating its death. And what I mean by that is a vacuum pump typically lasts five to 600 hours. So if it only lasted 100 hours, that could tell me something's wrong. If I put a new vacuum pump on it and then that one only lasts 100 hours, hmm, something's going on maybe with the drive of the vacuum pump, maybe there's an oil leak, I don't know, but there's clearly something more going on here. So by putting tack time or hobs on each of your record entries, you're able to track the life of each part or how much time is put on each part. Maybe maybe you put on a voltage regulator and you wanna put in a upgraded voltage regulator regulator later on in the life of plane and you pull that one that's out, it's still serviceable, it's still good, you'll be able to determine how many hours of service are on that voltage regulator and sell it to somebody online telling them it has this many hours, here's the record entry of when it was put on, here's the record entry of when it was moved on, removed, and that proves the time that is put on this thing. So for the abbreviations, you'll see a lot of things like TSMOH or TTE or TSN or TTA, and they all mean different things. TTA, start with that one, that's probably the most important, means time on aircraft, total time on aircraft. TTE means total time on an engine. TSMOH stands for time since major overhaul, and so on, and so on, and so on. All these different abbreviations. Now, Hobbs, I've mentioned a few times, some aircraft may elect to use a Hobbs as their means of tracking time. An example would be a twin engine aircraft because there's two engines and they're not always necessarily running at the same time. They use a Hobbs meter so that when the aircraft is powered on and the engines are running, the Hobbs meter will begin to count time and it is using a Hobbs meter. And then you use that Hobbs meter for tracking the time on both engines. Now, here's where that's a little interesting. What some people will elect to do, I've seen it, it's not really the best idea, but they'll do it, is they'll only run the engine that does not control the Hobbs until they get all the way out to the engine run-up area, and then they'll start the other engine and do their, well, they'll start it up in time for it to warm up and do their engine runs and whatnot. Or if they're just moving the aircraft around the field, like they're gonna taxi it over to the fuel pump and come back, they'll only start the engine that's not connected to the Hobbs so that the hour meter isn't counting while they're moving around on the ground. There is another way of doing this. A Hobbs can actually be 
hooked up to the landing gear so that it doesn't activate until the squat switch is released telling the aircraft that it's in the air and then it only counts true flight time of hours in the air and all the maintenance is tracked off of that which means you kind of erase all of those hours where you're just taxiing around the airfield not really doing anything and they don't count towards your maintenance intervals or your 100 hour inspections but that's more of an ops situation that i'm not concerned with this video is about abbreviations so Let's take, for example, an engine. You might have three times that are very, very different. You might have a tack time, a total time on the engine, and a time since major overhaul. Typical overhaul hours on engines are 2,000 hours. It can be more, it can be less. I've seen them way less, I've seen them just a little bit more, but we'll say 2,000 hours for the sake of this video. Let's say I flew my engine for 2,000 hours, and at the 1,000 hour mark, I had to change the tachometer to a new one because the old one quit working and I didn't transfer the time, so now the new tachometer reads zero. When I fly to a tach time of 1,000, now the engine will have 2,000 total hours on it, but the tach is only 1,000. Here it gets more complicated. The pilot or the owner elects to remove that engine and have it overhauled. The engine goes out for overhaul, it comes back, it gets put back on the aircraft, and the aircraft flies another thousand hours. Now, my total time on me, my engine is 3,000 hours, my time since major overhaul is 1,000 hours, and my tack time is 2,000 hours. So there's a lot of adding and subtracting in here to try to figure out what the current tack time is and what the current total time on something is. And it can be really, really frustrating as an IA trying to track down what the total time is, especially, and I said this in my last video, or not my last video, but my second to last video, when somebody changes a tachometer or when somebody does something with that and does not count the time, I've seen it happen before, somebody put a new tachometer in and they just put installed new tach, or installed new tachometer, tach time 0.0. .0. But they didn't say what the time was when they pulled the old one out. So the only entry we had was months before that of an oil change and then here we go months later and now the tack has changed to a new tack. So all of that time between there cannot be figured and you can't really just forget it didn't happen or that the aircraft didn't fly. So now there's no way to track the total time on the engine. There's no way to track the time since the major overhaul on the engine and that aircraft can't use, be used for 135 until that engine is rebuilt because there's no way of tracking that time because it's missing. And yes, that does happen and it's really annoying but this is why if you're getting a pre-buy done or if you're buying an aircraft and you want to use it for a 135 or a charter demand operation, you should probably look into that. So there you go, everybody. I'm going to keep it short. I kind of hope maybe that helped uh, understand things. I will add uh, two more, which was TTA, total time on the airframe and total time on the engine. A reason those might be different, let's say I flew to that 2000 hour mark and I elected to send the engine in and I did an exchange. So I sent them my engine for overhaul and they gave me a brand new engine from Lycoming. My total time on my engine might be zero, but my total time on my airframe is still gonna be the 2000, right? So anyways, I hope that helps clear some of this up. I realize this video was a little bit shorter, but as always, I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Go build something and be easy.